Hey guys, welcome to the video. Antarka Island isn't your typical birding spot with it being located right in the middle of an urban development. And it never appealed to me until I heard it was one of Cape Town's most popular places to go birding. Antarka Island opens at 7.30 and I decided I'd arrive a little bit earlier than that to do some birding in the canals around the island. This juvenile black crowned night heron was very active. It was also quite difficult to see and it ended up catching this tilapia so the day was already off to a good start. When 7.30 came I went straight into the nature reserve and made my way to the famous kingfisher hide. But as usual I got distracted a few times along the way. The first bird that caught my attention was this African swamp hen. And then a few other birds kindly posed for me in front of the camera. It was a great start to the day. When I finally arrived at the hide, it was already packed. I was so surprised because it was early on a Tuesday morning. So I snapped a quick shot of the hide from the outside. Here you can see someone's camera poking out. Once I got myself set up and comfortable, I immediately understood why this place was so popular. And it really is something special. The spied kingfisher had perched itself perfectly in front of me and it was covered in an amazing golden light. The pied kingfisher is one of three kingfisher species which I saw at Ntoka Island. The other two species were the giant kingfisher and the malachite kingfisher. The pied is the second largest kingfisher in southern Africa and it's probably the easiest to identify because of its black and white plumage. Reed cormorants are really interesting when it comes to their fishing techniques. They're skilled divers and they use their streamlined body and webbed feet to navigate through the water and hunt for fish. After darting around underwater this individual eventually surfaced with a massive tilapia gripped tightly in its bill. For about 20 minutes this bird and fish were going at it, both above and below the water's surface. The thing is the tilapia was pretty hefty so I couldn't tell who had the upper hand in the fight. It was a real toss up. I was really surprised because the fish was significantly larger than the cormorant's mouth. But the bird showed its impressive strength and determination by jerking its head and eventually swallowing the fish whole. It was quite a sight to behold. The 
breed cormorant is mostly found in bodies of fresh water and they're considered to be uncommon in marine habitats. These brand new ducklings will stay with their mother until their sixth week after fledging. The female yellow bull duck is doing a good job at keeping an eye on all seven of her ducklings at once. This can't be an easy job. When the adult bird leaves the water you can see the bright metallic green patch on its wings which you couldn't see while it was in the water. The bird hide was a real game changer. I was able to get much closer to birds that I hadn't been able to film in the past. Like these lesser swamp warblers that never seem to stay put. I was really lucky to see them feeding on the water's surface right out in the open. But the little bittern was probably the most elusive bird of the day. They're usually super shy and I've only ever caught quick glimpses of them, so it was a real treat to watch this one for a while. There are two distinct populations of this bird species in southern Africa. One that breeds and resides here year round, and another that breeds across a vast range spanning Europe to Asia, but migrates to southern Africa only during the summer months to escape the harsh cold of the northern hemisphere. But let me tell you, the highlight of the day had to be the common mohen chick. It was just too adorable the way it flapped its underdeveloped wings and begged its dad for food. The adult bird didn't seem to pay it much attention though. What's really cool about Ntaka Island is that they've made a lot of effort to keep it as natural as possible and promote bird life. You can see this in the man-made nesting holes throughout the area. There were even a bunch of brown-throated martins flying in and out of them throughout the day. Just too far away to film though. The Malachite Kingfisher is a stunning little bird that can be found near freshwater sources across southern Africa. It's known for its bright and vibrant colours, with the shades of electric blue, green and orange on its feathers. The juvenile malachite has much duller coloration, but still has that same electric blue color to it. It takes the juvenile a few months to molt into the adult plumage. When it spreads its wings, it looks like it's wearing a vibrant cape.
and be sure to keep an eye out for my bird videography series which is called a bird's eye view which will feature a beautiful pair of malachite kingfishers. The series will take you up close and personal with some of South Africa's most colourful and elusive bird life. Despite being well known, much of the bird life has yet to be documented on a large scale, making this series an exciting opportunity to see these birds like never before. While I was sitting at the bird hide, the star of the show finally made an appearance. A male giant kingfisher, the largest kingfisher species in the world. Its chestnut brown breast, robust bill and white speckled plumage are unmistakable features of this magnificent bird. This particular individual is just one of the many reasons why Antarctica Island has become such a popular birding destination. And it certainly didn't disappoint. perched out in the open, no more than 10 meters away. And then suddenly it swooped down and returned back to the same perch with the tilapia in its mouth. Almost as if it was showing off its catch. The views I got of this moment were unbelievable. It didn't stay around for long though, it eventually flew off to go and tenderize its meal up against a hard surface somewhere else. Just like the common moorhen, the red knobbed coot is also part of the Rallidae family. These birds share a similar frontal shield feature, although the coot's shield is white and the moorhen's is bright red in color. This red knobbed coot species also has two striking red knobs on its head located at the end of its frontal shield. These red knobs are what gives the bird its name, and they become more visible during the breeding season. The African spoonbill uses its uniquely shaped bill to filter food from the water. It swings its bill back and forth in the shallow water, snapping it shut when it feels a fish or other prey item. The bill has a flat spoon-like shape at the end that allows it to scoop up small aquatic creatures, like crustaceans and insects, as well as fish. It also uses its bill to stir up the water and dislodge prey from the muddy bottom. Unlike the spoonbill, this egret uses its bill as a spear, diving into the water to catch small fish.
At the bird hide there were also plenty of familiar birds that showed up. I was really surprised at the amount of bird life that was present. The common starling, which is originally native to Europe, has been introduced to various regions around the world where it's considered an invasive species. Its invasive behavior has caused environmental damage, including the displacement of native bird species and the disruption of ecosystems. Hi everybody, welcome to Century City in Cape Town. Um, I was planning on filming myself from the other hide, which is about 30 meters away. But there were so many people there, I was not expecting that for a Tuesday morning. I would say less people come to the side because it faces the sun in the morning. And also there's much more water, so the birds are a lot further away. At that hide, they're sort of man-made perches for kingfishers and other birds that like to use them. And in front of me are these heronries, which have, I'm sure, close to a hundred white-breasted cormorants nesting in them. But it's interesting that they're called heronries because I can't see a single heron that's nesting in them, unless they're just out of sight. Wow, I was amazed by how many different bird species there were at the other hide. And the birds are so used to the people, they come so close. I thought there's no way that this kingfish is going to perch four meters away from the hide. But it just sat there. I decided to move to the other side of the water body to avoid the harsh sunlight coming from the direction that the hide was facing. It was well worth it because the lighting was much better for filming birds. If you look over there, that's the bird hide I just left. These white-breasted cormorants were quite a sight. They looked like little aeroplanes zooming back and forth the man-made nesting structures. They were either carrying nesting material or food for the hungry young juveniles. Up close they were much bigger than they appeared from a distance. 
and they were really fast which made it difficult to catch them in flight. The white-breasted cormorant can live in a variety of water bodies, including estuaries and sea coasts. I was so captivated by these birds that I could have spent hours just watching them. There was so much going on all at once. The white-breasted cormorants and the sacred ibises have figured out that the man-made structures provide great nesting sites. There are a few reasons why these birds would have chosen to nest in these structures, like protection from predators and a stable place to raise their young. These structures also provide a close location to their favorite food source, fish. They've also gotten used to living around humans and tall buildings, so this is a great option for them. Antarctica Island is truly a remarkable and multifaceted conservation area full of delightful surprises. It's no wonder why it's such a popular destination and honestly, if I lived nearby it would definitely be at the top of my list. I hope you enjoyed learning about this amazing place and if you did, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more exciting content. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.